Good day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about a new custom handle that I got and the re-handling job I did on my beautiful Tinker Tank. Now this Tinker Tank is a knife that a lot of people want to have and so if you want to see an extensive knife review that I have already recorded, I'll put a link to the description up here and in the description of the video below. But first, now I know you probably think I'm going to say, you gotta like and subscribe, no. But first, I don't know if you've noticed, in the background, it's a little bit difficult to see, but I got a Lego bonsai that I'm going to be adding to my set because I think it's kind of cute. And so I'll show you a bit of B-roll of what it looks like. I just thought you should notice that if you see something green in the background, that's exactly what it is, even though it's out of focus. And yes, now you've guessed it. If you like what you see, remember it really helps the channel to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, that way you can be notified every week or every two weeks when there's a new video. So what I've done in this video is that I'm trying to appeal to two different types of audiences. Some people are going to come to this video, to this channel today and say, well, how did you rehandle the knife? And others just don't care, want to see the handle. And so what I've done, and I will put a chapter in the video, is if you want to see what method I use for rehandling as well as removing the original handle, that's going to be right at the end of the video. If instead you want to see what the handle looks like, well that's what we're going to talk about next as well as who made the handle for me, but the rehandling part of the video will be right at the end. So who made my new custom handle for the Tinker Tank? No other than Josh from Let's Handle This. I'll put his logo on screen right here as well as the description to his profile. He's mainly active on Instagram. Now Josh got a hold of me in September 2021 and said, Frankie, I really like what you do for the community. I'd love to be able to make you a handle on the house. And I said, Josh, first of all, I'm touched. And absolutely, buddy, I said, let me take a look at my collection and I'll see what handle or what vision for a handle I have on one of my knives. Now, as you all know, most of my knives do have custom handles already. And so I went through the list and like custom handle, custom handle, original handle. But when it was an original handle, the reason I didn't want to remove it is because it'd be an original handle on something like my Asaizan, which was the first fine handmade Japanese kitchen knife that I added to the collection, or it was something like the Kotetsu 270mm Yanagiba, which is the first ever Yanagiba to come out of Shibata-san shop. And so I was left in a little bit of a pickle. I'm like, I have many knives, but the original handles that are on a knife are on there for a reason, sentimental mainly. And so eventually I took a look at the Tinker Tank and I said, you know what? It's kind of a shame because the original handle is really beautiful, but I think this is the knife we're going to take a risk and we're going to make a custom handle for the Tinker Tank. And so I told Josh, I said, listen, well actually I, I guess what happened is he asked me, what do you want? And I said, Josh, listen. He said, every time I've had a vision in the past few years, I've realized that through hard learned experience, there's a bit of a discrepancy between my vision then translating that vision to the craftsman and then seeing what the final result looks like. And where that discrepancy lies is that my vision, well, it's my own, right? I see it in my head, I dream about it, and I want exactly that. And then you try to translate that to someone who's going to craft it for you and maybe something gets lost in translation. Also, at the end of the day, wood does whatever wood does. You can take a nice piece of wood that typically accepts dye really well, and you dye it this one time, this nth time, and all of a sudden it just doesn't accept it. And so I said, Josh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to give you a lot of artisanal liberty because I'm afraid that if I tell you exactly what I want, we're just not gonna get it. And you know what Josh said? He said, try me. He says, honestly, he says, most of the time I get almost exactly what the client wants. And so he gave me a little bit of confidence and I decided, sure, I'll take a risk. And Josh makes a lot of the handles for, I believe it's cutting edge. Um, knife shop out of the UK and so I went on that website and I saw a lot of the handles that he made for some rehandling knives on cutting edge and I, uh, I chose two knives and I'll put it up on screen. I chose two knives and I said Josh says he thinks he can do it whatever I want my vision. And so all right let me build something that is exactly what I'm dreaming of. I found two handles I loved. I brought them in Photoshop. I took my Tinker Tank photo from the photo project 2021 isolated the blade, removed the handle in Photoshop, took two handles from knives that I thought were really good looking on that website, and I literally fused them. I used masks, I used kind of like hybrid uh, theory to just create something that essentially I've never seen before, 
because I literally created it out of two handles that they themselves are so unique. And I said, all right, Josh, you think you can make whatever I want? Here, here's this Photoshopped handle. And that Photoshopped handle I'm going to put on screen because you're going to see what the handle looks like momentarily anyways. And Josh said he could do it. And so now without further ado, now that you've seen what the Photoshop handle looks like, I'm going to show you what the actual handle looks like. And you can tell me if you think that I was super pleased. Spoiler alert, Josh made me eat my words. And so here's the handle on the Tinker Tank. As you can see, it is almost exactly the Photoshop image that I handed over to Josh. The only difference if we wanted to get super nitpicky is the amount of resin on the handle as far as how far up it creeps the handle as compared to the Photoshop image. But I have never in my life so far given a craftsman a vision and had them essentially give me 99% back of what I dreamed. This handle is absolutely fabulous. And so now that I don't have to hide it, we can remove the old handle, which was sitting in front of the tinker tank. And as you just saw, this is the brand new handle. Now, I'm not going to pretend like this inspiration was my own because it is not. For the past, I want to say three or four years, the best custom handle I've ever seen, in my opinion, was on Jacques Lunoise's 240mm Kotetsu. Again, I'm going to put images up here on screen. Jacques Lunoise, maybe you know him as Eduardo Castro on Instagram. Absolutely amazing Mexican chef, sharpener. Um, it's some of his videos that I saw on Chubo on like sharpening 101 that really gave me the courage to start hand sharpening myself. And so the handle on his Kotetsu is really what inspired the handle on this Tinker Tank. Now, the materials on my custom handle are yellow cedar burl, both the bolster and the main part of the handle. The spacer is going to be black resin, and then of course the bottom half of the handle is honeycomb black resin. Whereas in Jacques Noise's handle, I believe instead of ye yellow cedar burl, it's buckeye burl. His spacer is maple. The smaller spacers, those are black resin, and then he's got the aluminum oxide uh, honeycomb black resin as well. And so thank you to Jacques Noise, whom I've obsessed over that Kotetsu for years. But finally, thanks to Josh from Let's Handle This, I have my very own. Now a quick word about burl, because this is a word we hear a lot, right? Yellow cedar burl, buckeye burl. I'm not sure that a lot of people know what it is, so I just want to quickly explain it. Cedar is a tree. Buckeye is a tree. But the word burl, we're using both here for buckeye burl and cedar burl. So what is burl? I want you to think of burl as a bit of an outgrowth and anomaly, right? When a tree is growing, it adds material on its tree rings, kind of horizontally, but in a way that's also um, very predictable, right? The tree continues to expand this way. Now, if the tree is punctured, if there's a pest infection, if even a human just kind of breaks a branch, what you end up having is you have these abnormal tree growths around this area of infection or injury, and so you get the grain that grows in a less predictable way. So instead of kind of just expanding this way, depending on the size of the wound, how deep it is, you end up having tree growth that is abnormal, right? Kind of like I'm just doing it with my hands. I have no idea how the growth is going to be, but it's in a way that's abnormal, and that's what makes it so beautiful, is that when you cut it, when you polish it, instead of just seeing tree rings one after another, concentric circles almost, what you see instead is you have these beautiful abnormal patterns that is what us as humans call visually appealing. So that is what the word burl means. That is why when you take a look at this handle, you have a lot of different grains and outgrowths uh, and essentially knots. A lot of people will call them knots as well. As you can see, there's a beautiful piece right here in the bolster. Now, one last thing before we get into the rehandle part of the video, a bit of a rehandle disclaimer. I try the best I can to always give you the best content possible. But however, when I did this a little rehandle video showing you how I knocked off the old handle, put on the new handle, at probably the most important part, the part you're all waiting for, to see the smoke coming out of the handle as I heat the tang and push the tang into the wax, that part's actually uh, out of the composition. I was a little bit too tight on the cutting board, and so I panicked a bit too because I had to, as you'll see, spoiler alert number two, uh, rehandle twice. I didn't have enough wax in the handle, and so rather than just leave it there and be content with it, I'm like, it needs a bit more wax. So point is, I'm very sorry at the very end, everything that's happening happens above the composition of the screen. 
Otherwise, enjoy. I hope you enjoy the next five minutes. For those of you that have never rehandled a knife, don't be afraid. I hope I put enough information there to really help you get an understanding of the process. If you have any questions as usual, just leave it in the comments below. Enjoy the next five minutes. Well guys, I hope you really enjoyed that rehandling video montage. For those of you who don't know how to rehandle, hopefully you know a little bit more now. If not, as usual, just leave a comment below. We are a community. We will help each other out. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you like the new sexy handle on the Tinker Tank. Again, thank you Josh from Let's Handle This. And until then, see you next time.